Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about finding the sums of infinite geometric series. Now this might seem kind of strange because it's infinite. How can you find the sum of a series that goes on forever? Well it is possible, but it's only possible with geometric series and only for specific types of geometric series. So here's the idea behind this. You don't need to write this part down. But let's look at this geometric series. First of all, I know it's geometric because every single time I'm multiplying by one half. You can find the sum of this infinite series by using what's called partial sums. Okay. So the idea here is first we're going to find the sum of just the first term. Then we're going to find the sum of the first two and see what we get. Then we'll find the sum of the first three then the sum of the first four, and then the sum of the first five, and we're going to look for a pattern. And we're going to see if there's a number that it looks like our sums is, uh, are approaching. Okay, so let's take a look at what they did here. So they found all of these partial sums. So when they added up, well, the sum of the first term is just the first term. Let's see, hold on, here we go. The sum of the first two terms is 0.75. The sum of the first three terms is 0.88. The sum of the first four is 0.94. The sum of the first five is 0.97. So as you continue with these partial sums, what you notice is that your sums get closer and closer to 1. And you can see they even graphed it for us. It looks like they're getting closer and closer to 1. So 1 is actually the limit for this series, and since all of our sums are getting closer and closer, increasingly closer to 1, we say that our sum is 1. So that's the idea um, behind using partial sums to find an infinite series um, summation. Now, this can take some time, and luckily for us, there is an equation that we can use. Oh, let's try one of these first. Okay, we're going to try one for this um, infinite geometric series. And I know it's infinite because I see that dot, dot, dot. So here I can see that I have the same R value. It's still multiplying by 1 half. Um, but let's give it a try. So we're going to first find the sum of the first term, which is just 0 0.2 in fraction form. Now to, let's find the sum of the first two terms. So I'm going to take my sum from the first one and then add the next term, which is 1 tenth and I get 0 0.3. Okay, well let's find the sum of the first three terms. So I can take my previous sum and just add my third term, and I get 0 0.35. Okay, let's find the sum of the first four terms. So take the sum of the first three and add the next one, and we get 0 0.375. Okay, looks like we're starting to see a pattern, but let's try another one. Let's find the sum of the first five terms. So I'll take the sum of the first four and add the fifth, and I get 0 0.3875. So you can see that all of these sums are getting closer and closer to 0 0.4. So that is the sum of this infinite geometric series. Now, like I previously mentioned, this can take some time to do it um, using partial sums. So luckily there is an equation that we can use. And it's s equals a sub 1 over 1 minus r. So it's actually very similar to the summation for a geometric um, series that is finite. Now remember I said that it only works for certain geometric series. And actually it only works if the absolute value of r, your common ratio, is less than 1. That's just a fancy way of saying that your r value is between negative 1 and 1, not including negative 1 or 1. Now, if your r, the absolute value of your r, is greater than or equal to 1, we just say that the series has no sum. It's the same idea. If I asked you to find the sum of an arithmetic infinite series, you would say no sum. It only works for these specific geometric series. So let's give these a try. Here, um, in this first example, I can see that my, let's see, my r value is 0 0.7, which means that I can find the sum. So I'm going to use my little equation that we just learned. And I see that a sub 1 is 3, so 3 over 1 minus r, which is just 3 over 0 0.3, which is 10. 
that's it. Now let's look at num uh, B. Here I can see that my R value is 3 because each time I'm multiplying by 3. Well, since the absolute value of 3 is not less than 1, this geometric series has no sum. Easy as that. Our R value didn't work, so we can't do it. Okay, in example C, our R value is negative 3 fourths, so we can find the sum of this infinite geometric series using our equation. A sub 1 is 1 over 1 plus 3 fourths, because minus negative, which is 1 over 7 fourths, which is 4 sevenths. And that's all there is to it. All right, now I would ask for you guys to um, pause the video and give these three examples a try on your own. All right, thank you for giving them a try. Here are the worked out solutions. Um, so you can see that for the first example, you can use our equation. You should get two-thirds as your answer. For the second example, our R value is greater than 1. So you cannot find um, the sum, so we say no sum. And for the fourth one, our R value is one-fourth. Be careful, that was a little bit tricky. So we can use our equation, and the sum is 4. All right, at this point, I would like you to um, try using partial sums. There was a little typo in the book. This number should just be 625. So I'd like you to use um, partial sums um, to find the summation of this infinite geometric series. Okay, thank you for giving that a try. So when we find the partial sums, sum of the first term is 0.4. The sum of the first two terms is 0.56, first three is 0.624, then 0.6496, then 0.6598. So you can see that this sum is coming closer and closer to 0.66. Now, using partial sums is just an estimate. So if you said 0.7, that's a pretty good estimate. But I think 0.66 is a little bit closer. But either one is fine. So when you try this on your homework, if your answer is close to the answer key I provided, that is totally fine. Okay, so your homework for tonight is homework 8.10 from the book, um, and that is all for today.